Hi folks, my name is JD. I'm with Legendary Arms Works in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Today you can see we're at the range. We're going to take advantage of the beautiful weather and sight in our rifle. So today I brought with me one of our most popular models. This is the uh, Legendary Arms Works M704 Professional Rifle. Uh, this one's chambered in 308 Winchester. I'll give you a brief overview of the rifle. Uh, these are, uh, first of all, our own handcrafted Legendary Arms Works formerly high-tech specialty stocks. Uh, the barreled action is bedded into the stock with uh, a rear pillar and a front aluminum bedding block. Uh, the bedding block acts as a seat for our oversized recoil lug. Uh, barreled action is free floated in the stock and uh, the, the action itself is a controlled round feed with a three position safety. The barrel is free floated. Uh, the professional model is also fluted and includes a removable muzzle brake. Uh, the muzzle brake looks very, very seamless, but as you can see, comes off with light pressure and also includes a thread protector should you choose not to use the brake. You can see that our rifle already has a scope mounted. Uh, so this morning I took the time to mount and bore sight the rifle before we came to the range. If this is your first time sighting in a rifle, do yourself a favor and if you have the capability, bore sight your own rifle. Uh, if not, take it to your local gun shop and have either an employee or a gunsmith foresight it for you. It's nothing more frustrating than going to the range and not knowing where your rounds are impacting. So boresighting will give you the ability to uh, get to the range and at least have rounds hitting paper so you can uh, save some money on ammo. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the accuracy guarantee. Legendary Arms Works guarantees that our rifles shoot uh, within one minute of angle with factory premium ammunition and for a three-shot group. Let me break that down a little bit. Why three-shot group? Uh, if you look at our rifles, our barrel contour, it's not too heavy, not too light. And the reason being is we wanted these rifles to be comfortable when you're carrying them in the field. So for that reason, if you shoot more than three shots, the barrel's going to heat excessively and start to string shots. Three shots is good enough to know what the capabilities of your rifle and your ammo combination are. Next, the premium ammunition. The reason why we suggest premium ammunition is because they use better components. They're much more consistent than the generic components they use in generic ammo. So consistency generally equals better accuracy, so long as you're good, using good shooting technique. The other thing is that you really need to have a stable shooting platform. These rifles will absolutely shoot one minute of angle. We've proven that time and time again uh, with a variety of factory premium ammunition. Uh, I'm sure you can also get good results with hand loads, but beware that uh, shooting hand loads in the rifles will void the factory warranty. We realize when you're hunting that you don't always have the most stable platform and you're in makeshift positions, but when you're zeroing your rifle, it's essential that you could have a, have a good stable platform to shoot from so that you can make good solid adjustments and have confidence in your, in your zero. One of the things that we do is we use fairly standard range equipment, nothing extravagant. We use sandbag for the front, sometimes a bunny ear or a rabbit ear bag for a rear support. Nothing you usually can't find at your local shooting store or uh, your firearms retailers. Uh, or sometimes even provided from the range. The ammunition we're going to be using today for our test fire session in our sight in is Federal Premium. This is a 168 grain Sierra hollow point boat tail match king bullet. Very, very accurate load. Uh, we've had some excellent results with this ammo down as, as small as uh, 3 eighths of an inch at 100 yards. One of the factors that's going to determine how far you sight your rifle is the, the geographical area you live in and what kind of terrain you have. In Pennsylvania, the average hunter's shot is less than 100 yards, and so a 100-yard zero is more than adequate. Uh, but your zero has to do with both the size of the game that you're shooting and the maximum distance that you can possibly shoot, and of course the capabilities of that caliber. Okay, we're here at the range. You can see we're all set up. Um, we're shooting on a nice, solid concrete bench, extremely stable. And you can see my setup it requires nothing more than a, a regular sandbags. Uh, so I have the front resting on sandbags and the rear with a bunny ear bag. Uh, one of the things I like to do when you're sighting in your rifle is to allow the rifle a natural point of aim towards the target. So set your rifle up so it's pointing at the target without any pressure from, from you, the shooter. Uh, 
that ensures that when you're standing or sitting behind the rifle and shooting, that you don't have to muscle the rifle left, right, up, or down to get your reticle onto your target. Now we've gone ahead and fired a couple sighter shots just to make sure that the bore sight was good and we're on paper. There's still some adjustment to go. So when it comes to adjusting for your point of impact, what you want to do is use the elevation turret and the windage turret on your scope. They're clearly marked for however uh, much distance the, the, the impact will move. This one is for one click at one quarter inch at 100 yards. So for every click I take, it will move the bullet's impact one quarter inch, either up, down, left, or right. Okay, and there are dir directional arrows to show you which way the bullet's impact will move. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we're down range. We're taking a look at our test target. Uh, the first couple shots are on the right hand side just off the paper. Okay, I made an initial adjustment to move closer to the center of the bull. My first two shots are about five o'clock, I'd say about two and a half inches from the point of aim, which is the dead center of the target. So in this case, I need to move my bullet's impact about two and a quarter to two and a half inches up and about two inches to the left. So my adjustment on my scope is for one quarter inch at 100 yards. So this is going to equate to about uh, eight to 10 clicks for elevation and about, I'd say seven to eight clicks for windage. Okay, we're right back at the bench. We're ready to make adjustments to the scope turrets for our elevation and windage changes. Uh, again, just follow the directional arrows and it'll usually say uh, UD for up and down or LR for left and right and uh, indicate which direction you need to move the bullet's point of impact. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move up about, I'd say, 10 clicks. And to the left, which in this case is counterclockwise, about 7 clicks. And my recommendation is when you make adjustments like that, don't do one or two clicks. It's too small of an adjustment to see sometimes. Uh, make bold adjustments and you'll be able to see that readily on paper. Okay, so here's the final group, three shots into one minute of angle. Uh, my first two shots are clustered at the bottom right of the bull about four to five o'clock. Uh, that's two shots side to side, almost on top of each other. And my final shot as the barrel started heating up at about nine o'clock, uh, but well within a one inch and, uh, and that, that's federal premium ammunition. That's good quality ammo. Okay, we're all done shooting. Uh, I have a good zero, I have good confidence in my ability uh, and my rifle's ability to shoot that ammo exactly where I placed the reticle. One thing I forgot to mention that I feel is worth mentioning is that we talked about a stable platform and about using use of the sandbags in the, in the rear bag to let the rifle sit as solidly as possible. And I mentioned trying to take as much of the human factor out. Notice when I shot, I had just a solid foundation behind the rifle to absorb the recoil. You might have also noticed that I had my hand placed on top of the scope and that was not so as not to exert any lateral pressure on the rifle while I was shooting but also when it comes to shooting heavier recoiling calibers it controls the muzzle rise of the rifle as well. Um, when you're shooting for a group it's best to shoot the whole three shot group at one sitting and not get up for every single shot and take a break and let the barrel cool. You want to know what your rifle is capable of uh, as that barrel starts to heat up. And so shoot 
sit down and shoot all three shots at one sitting. It doesn't have to be rapid fire, but do the do a, a sustained fire with a few a few seconds between shots. And uh, if by chance you're looking through the reticle, and you can see your heartbeat making the reticle bounce up and down, your stable your platform is not stable enough. So uh, make sure that. Uh, you take as much human error out as possible and you should get good results. Thanks for joining us today folks, we really hope you learned something. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for uh, new upcoming videos and uh, please visit us on our website at legendaryarmsworks.com and other social media including Facebook and Instagram. Thanks very much.